Um, well, there's two. I'm going to answer that in uh, in two ways. One, I'm, I'm just going to add to what you were saying. One, another one of the reasons that the musicians, uh, particularly black musicians, went to Europe was because of the segregation or the whole racial situation in America. They found that they were treated like human beings and and equals, you know, outside of this country. Um, right. Right, and that was, the, you know, they said, you know, once they experienced that, they said, well, you know, many stayed because they didn't want to go, have to go through that whole humiliation and piece of the of, of the uh, uh, racial situation in America. So they would stay. And also from an artistic perspective and, a, and an appreciation perspective, um, it was, they, were, they, were, uh, they were accepted. It was, uh, the audiences were open. Um, and without that element of racism, uh, it was it was a much freer uh, feeling uh, uh, within the environment, you know. And musicians could collaborate comfortably and freely, and you know there was there was no uh, racial thing put into it. Right. Um, the another part of it was that um, uh, going over there was also one expanding one's own self experiences. Mm-hmm. I, I think that you know because art and music is something that is, is shared. It's, it's, there, 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 there are no boundaries with that. Right, right, right. The situation overseas now is is different from for jazz than it than in, than it was back in that era. Um, very simply because um, our music has been or it, it, it's been accepted around the world and, and and in many so many places it's it's in the conservatories and in schools and colleges and so um, uh, they've created their own uh, uh, scene and crop of musicians mm-hmm. and so um, uh, rather you know they've been and they've been learning the music from us right. so now yeah so um, there isn't a lot of space for us mm. as it used to be mm-hmm. you know in, in terms of work right. so um, to be overseas and to work overseas you, you really have to focus on your business uh, because that, that's what it's more about that now um, it, 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 it's it's business wise it's much more competitive Okay. Um, artistically, well, it's, I think it's still open because I've, I've been over there now pushing 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been doing the shuttle back and forth, and, I, you know, they're, they're, they're very accepting to original music. Um, I'm, I'm not doing the avant-garde, the free thing, you know, I'm, 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 but, I'm, but I'm still writing, you know, I'm, I'm still playing a, a, lot of my own, a lot of my own material. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, yeah, it's 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 just very important to stay focused business wise and work very hard at that. Yeah, it seems that that's what you do. <laughs> you work very hard at it. Yeah. Hey, Blue, uh, before uh, uh, we continue, uh, tell us who Ray Blue is. Give us a little background on you, uh, Blue. Uh, where are you from? Who you were influenced by? It's okay. Well, I'm. I'm. I was. I was born in Virginia, in Portsmouth, and but, and then I was. Uh, I was raised in, in in Peekskill, New York, and um, Peekskill is uh, is a community which is about thirty miles north of New York City. So it's so it's part of what we call the metropolitan area as well. Anyway, some folks call it upstate, but it's it's not that far. Uh, there, there was always a lot of music here. Um, um, I started playing, uh, I started studying uh, when I was eight, seven, eight years old. Mm-hmm. Actually, I, I turned eight that, you uh, know, into that summer. And so I started when I was seven, and actually. Um, and I first, my first instrument was clarinet. All right. Yes, yeah. So, I, I, you know, so the clarinet piece is, you know, it's, it's about classical as, as well. So, um, and I always had an ear for jazz and, and so I played clarinet till I got to, into middle school. Then I added uh, bass clarinet, and wanting to play in the jazz band, I added uh, my, I, I began to play uh, playing tenor saxophone. So yeah, so I played um, um, clarinet in in the uh, in concert band, orchestra, wind ensemble, etc., and uh, saxophone in marcha band, and jazz band. Okay. So yeah, so I, um, I uh, started gigging when I was 15. I was uh, uh, we put a band together and uh, uh, we were playing for dances and etc. And there was there were always you know there, it's very, it was a very rich community as far as as far as the music it was because there were music there was, there was music in every bar and club. Gotcha. It was always music, man. Mm-hmm. And um, I obviously had an interest in it and. Um, uh, the older cats would, would uh, the, the older cats took me under their 
way, uh, which was something that, you know that was that was very important because that's what we learned from. Right, right, right. We have the experience, and uh, my parents are very my parents are very supportive. You know, uh, uh, very much having an eye on us because <laughs> there were rules. What would you say was the major thing that helped in your development out of all that? The major thing. Mm -hmm. um, the major thing was that the um, uh, wanting to do it and uh, uh, being being guided by 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 folks who believed in the structure, uh, that believed in discipline and doing things right. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Um, the influences I had it that were many. You know, there, there, were, there were many influences. Uh, I can't name them all because there's so many, and, and I'm right. influenced by people. Um, uh, you know, uh, I, it, my, in my, my high school developed, junior high and high school developed, you know, I, um, uh, there were, there were, there was a lot of rhythm and blues and, and soul music and, uh, King Curtis and Junior Walker were, you know, some of the cast that I dug, uh, in addition to, to, to Coltrane and, and Bird and Mo King Mobley and Sonny Rollins and, and Dexter Gordon and, you know, and, and all those alike, man. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Duke Ellington and stuff, and Stan Getz, and 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 Mulligan, and you know, all, all those horn, all those all those reed players, and you know, and then uh, uh, good 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 music was very important to me. Gotcha, gotcha. And like when I got to junior high school, I uh, I joined the I joined the Columbia Record Club. Mm. <laughs> you know, where you could get like ten, twelve records for ninety nine cents. Right. Yeah, to join and that was cool. And I and I, I bought I bought I bought uh, a lot of jazz. I bought a lot of jazz man. Yeah. And um uh so I was I think it was eleven years old, twelve years old. And when I and I would hear the and, and listening to the records of Miles in Europe and Train and all the different folks and I said, Man, and that's what that's what I wanted to do. That's what you wanna do. Jazz and,